It's almost four o'clock in Alabama. And uh, we're going to ask Reverend Alonzo Mulberry, so Mission Church of God in Christ, to lead us with so mission, with so mission to lead us with the invocation and the pledge. Uh, everyone, please stand. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to come together. We thank you together and the people in this time of sharing. We pray that you will give directions and give guidance and give understanding and instructions for things that are necessary to move our city forward. God, give us peace. Give us to know what is necessary, what needs to be done, God, for this time. Pray for every person represented here. God will bless them. Touch the minds of the people. Give guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Appreciate that, Pastor Mulberry. Roll call, please. Mayor Hill. Here. Vice Mayor Brown. Present. Commissioner Borum. Present. Commissioner Campbell. Present. And Commissioner McCaskill is not present. Do you have a quorum? I think uh, I was told that she had jury duty. I don't know if they still there or not. Well, uh, moving on to public comment. Of the comments, we know that three minutes, no topics will be, no action will be taken on topics of discussion. Is there anyone here for public comment? If you are, fill out a yellow speaker card and pass it forward. Seeing no one here for public comment, we will move on to item one, item two of our agenda, facility upgrades and discussions. Uh, we have a, a small presentation which kind of gives an outline of of what we received um, from, from the architects is related to the process. Um, and so I guess as we move forward with the presentation, we'll start out item A is City Hall, item B is Public Works, C is Black Police Department, D is other facilities. And so the purpose of us having this meeting today is really to talk about uh, what we do to move the city forward, are we getting the highest and best use of the facilities in their existing capacity? Um, and <laughs> lastly, can we afford um, can we afford any of these options? Um, and so we'll look at what the fiscal impact will be on those options, um, and kind of just have a conversation about where we go after we finish this particular section. We will move into our uh, Brownfield assessment workshop, and we'll go from there. So, starting out, we will start with City Hall. And, and actually, I think <coughs> the options encompass all the different parts of this puzzle together. Um, and so, we'll, we'll move forward this time. Okay, so uh, basically, what was done, Joe from CRG Architects is here, and um, they basically looked at several different options that. Um, Mr. Griffith and I um, spoke with them about this is a map of kind of all of the uh, locations we're going to discuss. Obviously, City Hall and City Hall Annex are down in the riverfront. Uh, the current public works lot is out here by number three. Uh, Ride Solutions is over here by the post office. Uh, of course, police and fire department are here, and the PRC building is out here west near, uh, near the airport. So option number one, we own the PRC building. Right. Oh, where? You said that. Okay. It, it, it's an option, and we'll talk about it. So, option number one was to keep the current existing public works operations located at 1010 Ocean Street and add a metal building for expansion. Um, renovate the existing city hall building and the existing annex building. Um, out of public works, doing that would um, we would be adding a new metal building, approximately 5,000 square feet. Um, as 
well as some other site improvements. The total there is 700,000. Uh, under option number one was renovate existing city hall building to make it all administration and uh, then renovate the annex building uh, to create a new meeting room uh, for the city commission slash multi-purpose space. Um, doing both of those, uh, almost 1.7 million on city hall. Uh, again, almost 1.7 million in the annex building. And then in order to resolve um, the space issues at the police department, constructing a new building for the police department, 12,000 square feet, um, 3.6 million. So all of those combined together, almost $8 million, 7.6 million. Um, advantages of that are that it utilizes existing building spaces at 1010 Ocean Street, which is where the lot already is. Uh, disadvantages are Public Works is still located in the neighborhood. We have basically industrial type operations with the uh, sanitation trucks, Public Works vehicles uh, coming and going through the neighborhoods. Um, another disadvantage is location for the police department is really uh, undetermined. Um, and then another disadvantage would be administration and meeting spaces are in separate separate locations. Um, and so just before we go through all the discussion of those items, um, Mr. Griffin, yes, sir. can you give a quick synopsis, I will you and Chief give a quick synopsis of what your current needs are, how your existing facilities um, limit you, and, um, and then kind of proceed from there. Yes, sir. So we've got a total of about 45 full-time staff equivalents. Um, our operations are 24-7, similar to the police department. We've got three divisions that are subject to 24-7 call-in. Um, again, multiple divisions. We have to have partitioned warehouse space for um, auditing purposes. You have sanitation. You have water and sewer. You've got streets, facilities, parks and grounds, maintenance, all running out of the same location, um, as well as a limited uh, fleet maintenance uh, division. A um, lot of equipment. Um, we don't have a cap site, so there's a lot of dust right now um, adjacent to an old dump, which we just did some remediation and cleanup and turned it into parkland now. Um, trying to think of other things that can kind of give you a, a picture of the site. We have to store a lot of materials on site, things that you typically don't want to be out in the open. That's probably one of the advantages to the current location. Um, as Mr. Reynolds said, we're in the middle of a neighborhood. So in addition to the garbage trucks that come through, you get 18 wheelers deli uh, delivering material. Uh, that's less than ideal. Uh, and most of the buildings are well over 40, 50 years old. Um, I think the mayor has seen them, Ms. Robinson has seen them, Mr. Reynolds. She's uh, seen them too now. state of disrepair. Uh, it's to the point where we, we question any amount of investment when we have to do a, a repair to the building. So, Chief. Uh, for us, for the police department, again, we have 41 employees. We currently operate out of two separate buildings. Uh, we are stretched for office space in our current um, building, along with a uh, storage space. Uh, we have two um, smaller uh, storage buildings, uh, which is on the back of our lot, which we use for um, housing um, different supplies and things of that nature, things for evidence and separate vehicles. Um, our current existing uh, detective division operates out of the second building, which is on the back lot, uh, and it too um, is in need of repair. Our building is, like Jonathan mentioned, is uh, over 50, 60 years old. It's been uh, remodeled several times, um, and then over from that, we have damage to our roof um, that has attempted to be fixed uh, over the past years but it just seems to keep coming back and it's coming back worse. Um, uh, we need, we're, we're going to need, uh, again, office space to where we're, we are a growing department and we're also looking at a storage space uh, for all of our equipment. and 
vast majority of foot traffic and calls that we receive here at City Hall are um, related to building and zoning type activities. So that's uh, why we uh, undertook small amount of renovations here to try to accommodate those staff members at the, um, the annex building to come to City Hall. Uh, but again, this the City Hall and, and the general layout of the building is really not conducive, um, probably not utilized in the, in the best way, and um, it's kind of why we, you know, we're discussing each of these locations um, today. And I think, as as everyone knows, when we do have student of the month meetings, um, there's just there's not even enough space in City Hall. There, oftentimes, people standing outside of City Hall can't even get inside. So. Um, thoughts were with option number one, keeping City Hall as um, the existing administration building. It's kind of the face of the city. It's the one closest to Reed Street. It's the one that when somebody from out of town comes here, um, they come to this building since it's the one closest to the street. Um, Under option number one, then the annex building could be the city commission meeting room and the and you know other uses of the multi-purpose space. Option number two, and this is just kind of a map showing um, city hall annex building city hall, um, and then this is the uh, this is the lot out of 1010 Ocean Street and the current layout of the buildings. As you can see, uh, Jonathan mentioned, administrative offices are just a small small portion here of the workshop full barn for the trucks and it's just kind of um, uh, they're spread out quite a bit over <coughs> multiple different buildings that are all in a state of disrepair. Uh, option number two um, is the potential to co-locate with ride solutions and build a simple st shop structure i.e. a metal building or a pole barn structure um, and then the other options are basically the same for City Hall and Annex however uh, flip-flopping, uh, making the uh, City Hall building a conference slash event venue along with the uh, area where, um, well, I guess the meeting space was included in the annex building. Um, but I mean, there's, there's several different options that we could do with City Hall and the annex building. Uh, uh, for the annex building, it was renovating the annex building and consolidating the administration and the meeting space in that building together. Um, Prices are roughly the same. City Hall's estimates a little bit higher on this 1.8. Um, Co-locating with Ride Solutions, the Public Works, a total of, what is that, 1.3 almost. Um, that would require adding a new building with office space, adding a new building with warehouse space, um, new paving and, and parking, as well as uh, covered parking for the equipment. Same, same uh, price for renovating the police department again. The total is um, quite a bit higher. The first estimate with just building a new building at Public Works uh, was 700. This one is uh, approximately 1.3 for, for Public Works. Um, advantages are that it centralizes, centralizes the Public Works and locates it out of uh, the existing neighborhood that it's in. Um, ability to contract with ride, ride solutions for shop services ability to use ride solutions existing facilities and not have to construct um, uh, completely brand new facilities. Uh, again, disadvantage is the location for the police department is undetermined. Um, so you can see here, um, this is ride, is that, uh, yes, that is ride solutions. So this is the post office here, and then this is ride solutions. The city already owns this property right here. This is the small little auction house just beside the, uh, the post office. And so South 11th Street could be used for <coughs> ingress and egress to that property um, in order to get uh, that off of this 10th and Laurel. Uh, we would be able to get that traffic off, uh, off of that property. I do know that um, Ride Solutions is going to be coming forward they're going to be coming forward with a, a proposed PID, correct, mm -hmm. to 
relocate their ingress and egress to South 11th Street anyways. Yeah. Um, that will be coming forward, they want to improve their lot, and it gets it to where their ingress and egress is not in a residential neighborhood as well. Um, and then um, option number three is to relocate operations to the existing PRC building. Uh, these operations include City Hall, Building and Zoning, Police Department, and Public Works. Um, this is a little separate. We'll come back to renovating the Police Department in a minute. But relocating all of these uh, departments to uh, the PRC building, we estimated a, a purchase price of the building at 1.8. Um, CRG Architects estimated renovations of 28,000 square foot at $155 a square foot, um, 4.34, and then covered storage for public works at about $540,000. Um, that would be offset by, we, you know, it would give the city the opportunity to sell City Hall in the Annex building so that there's a, a, a higher and better use of this property. Um, of course, that would leave the, the current police department buildings um, vacated. Uh, that would allow us to renovate those for other uses um, or uh, other options. The advantages are is that it would consolidate um, all of these different operations together. It would uh, allow for purchase of a building that is large enough for expansion and has plenty of parking. Um, and it allows us to try to utilize existing downtown venues for rentable functions. Disadvantages are uh, limited parking for downtown functions. Uh, we would be re relocating all of the services to the to the westernmost portion of the city, and existing facilities that are not sold would have to be maintained by the city. Um, what else would we like to talk about on this one? So <coughs> square footage cost of this renovation. One of the things we talked about, and we actually talked to Joe about this, uh, was uh, <coughs> the number of square footage. I guess for all of the the existing renovation projects, looking at them, uh, considering the fact that um, everywhere except the annex building, um, we've got um, HVAC. Um, so we've got air conditioning, um, we have the electrical, we got all the other things in place, and we basically put in the partition walls. Um, I talked to them a little bit about the cost of those those numbers, and and I, I guess the architects for lack of are you going to be you're going to make sure you're, you're going to err on the, the higher side just in case there's some unforeseen things that may be in place. Yeah, what, what I want to do is I want to make sure I put out to you a realistic number that, you know, because I could tell you anything. I can say it's 60 bucks a square foot and then you say yes and then when you get the bill from the contractor it's going to, you know, make you comply and see how high it is because what I'm seeing, what we're seeing as a trend in the industry right now is that material costs and construction costs are skyrocketing. Uh, the economy is in that for in, in most places it's a it's a booming right now so contractors are being very specific about what they pick to even do work on uh, you know what we have in, in the contractors that do put numbers together for jobs they're trying to make up for you know eight to ten years where they were struggling and it, it, it has become very apparent and we were shocked at first when the last couple jobs that we put out for bid how high the numbers were when they came back. Um, we've talked to numerous contractors uh, about you know why they're seeing the cost increases and, and how, what they're doing, and they just all keep saying the same thing. There's so much work that's going around in lots of different places, especially with the fact that her, you know the uh, Florida was hit with two hurricanes this past year. So you have some contractors that are going down south and going to where the money is for lots of rehabilitation, a lot of materials is going down south, as well as what everybody's trying to do up north in, in, in central Florida as far as the growing construction. Uh, I've heard that the University of Florida right now is looking at their buildings are between $300 to $400 a square foot right now for anything that they get built new on their campuses. So it's, it's, it's just trending everywhere up. So the reason why I put the numbers in that I did was because it was reflective of what we're seeing right now on, on a renovation scale. Uh, in the most recent renovation that we did was a 5,000 square foot renovation with a 2,000 square foot addition, and that one came in at 190 a square foot total altogether. And it wasn't grandiose finishes, you know, it's not marble walls and tile and stuff, it's LBT on the ground and the drop ceiling with some light.
light fixtures. And another reason why the costs have been so high recently is because there's also some components in the Florida Energy Management Code where they're requiring a lot more redundancy than what we've done in the past. And it, and it sounds it sounds silly, you know, because basically when you looked at a while ago, what everything was in building costs, you know, you had you walked into an office, you flipped the light switch, the light turned on, it was usually a fluorescent fixture, and that was it. Well, now we've grown to the fact that you can walk into an office, you flip on the light switch, the light switch goes to an occupancy sensor, the occupancy sensor tells you that you're in the space and you can sit down. And the receptacles on your walls are also connected to the occupancy sensor. So now you have lots of extra wiring going to each of one of the receptacles in the room, doubling the amount of electricity that you're pulling and making it a much more complicated system. So when you leave the space, if you happen to not turn off the light, everything plugged into the receptacles and the occupancy sensor and the lights all turn off all, all by themselves, which unfortunately just increases the cost for the end user, which is you, because your, your staff doesn't turn away. It, it, it's, all, it's all predicated on the thing that they think that nobody will ever turn off a light when they leave an office, so they make, make sure to put all these uh, things in there. As well as if the office has a if the office has a window, then there's daylight harvesting that you have to take into account. And so then you have to put two switches on the wall. One switch does the light away from the window. One switch does the light closer to the window. So that way, you know, if you would ever walk into a space and just turn on the light away from the window and use natural sunlight at your desk. It, it, it's it's kind of silly on some of the things that they're doing in the building code. But unfortunately, it's the things that they're doing. We have to put it in there because of our professional uh, responsibilities because it gets checked by the building department and, and every uh, and, and they check for those items. So those are the reasons. Those those are the reasons why costs are increasing just as much as the reasons for the people that even you know, the construction crews that are working on the jobs and the actual material increases as well. So a long explanation to the fact that yes, construction costs are going up. By the time, unfortunately, I don't know how fast. The process works, which is another thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to also um, project by the time that you make a decision on what you want to do, drawings are completed, and things go out for bid, and then you get numbers back that will be reflected on what those costs would be. You, you know, just kind of like dealing in the futures market as well. I don't want to, you know, and you know, who's to say that there isn't another. But uh, I don't want to say downturn, but if there is a slowdown in the amount of construction and the numbers become much more reasonable, it could be something that you know the city of Palakka gets the, to uh, benefit from. We've seen it happen for the college, the St. John's River State College, both ways. I've seen them get a 23,000 square foot science building for 130 bucks a square foot, and then I just saw them get a little renovation to the fine arts building that came in at 180 dollars or 200 dollars a square foot. So it just, it really does ebb and flow, and I figure that these numbers with the projection in the future is about what we'd be seeing based on the special needs and criteria that of course would get put into the design phase after, the fa after you know, you've come up with the direction of how you want to move forward and we get much more into the weeds about what would be the requirements of the city. <laughs> You're getting a good slideshow while I'm talking. That's <laughs> so, no, that's, I, I think you guys get the general idea from the photographs that you see of what conditions we have at the city lot. Um, Mr. Griffith and his crew actually just went in um, and did some um, minor renovations to the break room. Uh, they did some upgrades to the break room. They brought in a refrigerator um, just to try to upgrade some of the, the circumstances that you have in place. There's a lot of it, the, the conditions in my mind are, in my estimation, are um, deplorable. Um, it's been a lot of hodgepodge additions. Um, there, that building has lived its lifetime and two other lifetimes past. And we're at a point where you know we've got to move forward. I'm talking to Jonathan, one of the things that uh, you know he he talked about for a while um, last year when we actually started when we set money aside to fund this project over an extended period of time um, through their budget was using uh, metal buildings, uh, using a metal building as a means of uh, 
creating the office space, the warehousing space, and having that all in one mixed place. And also uh, creating a new pole bar, um, which in essence is um, a very simplified structure. But he wanted to do it in such a way that the vehicles be able to park in, uh, could secure them um, with the garage doors coming down and them being able to pull in and pull out the next morning. Um, they also have a need for a lot station uh, to deal with some of the, uh, the issues that they have with the sanitation trucks and things of that nature. And so um, significant needs, and I, I think what it does is it brings us into the 21st century and it gives us a uh, good working space. Right now everybody's on top of each other and just kind of to live with the conditions that are there. Um, the guys don't really have um, a break room and perception is reality. There's a there's a perception that there's a divide um, at the lot. Um, there isn't a divide. Everybody's living in back and working in bad conditions. Just one set of bad conditions are a little worse than the other set of bad conditions. And as a city, we need to make sure that we protect our employees um, so that they have conditions that are that will allow them to be as productive as they can be. It will allow us to get past some of the issues as it relates to um, just being able to, to get away from some of the package AC units that we're using to be able to bring in IT to do some other stuff. Um, we've got serious issues when it comes to our internet and fiber. Um, and all these options give us an opportunity to kind of create a different system. Just coming into City Hall by itself um, and moving four employees has been kind of a nightmare to retrofit it into this building. And it wasn't many walls, but it was limited space. Um, and it was kind of like, uh, I hate to quote um, the former city manager, but it was like putting lipstick on a pig. And, you know, the, the goal was not to spend a lot of resources in doing so. The goal was to be able to put some, to be able to get everybody in one building so that we could determine what was the best way to move forward. Um, I think the renovations um, gave a little bit of a face at the city hall so that it wouldn't be as worn down as it was before. Um, but ideally, it's not the optimal use of the space. Um, I had an opportunity to look at Hampton Roads. Um, yeah, Hampton Roads Post Office is a space very similar to uh, this post office, to the city hall. And so if you look at the space, it's very similar. Um, it was an old um, city hall building, post office building that at one point was used. They turned it into a wedding facility. We always talk about highest and best use of our facilities. Um, with the growing needs that are coming into the community and the redevelopment that's going on. It looks very similar to what we have, um, and they retrofitted it to um, to use it as a wedding center, as an event center, and they're booked out two years in advance. Um, you know, it's, it's country, it's <coughs> similar to ours. And so, um, that building, has, they put a mezzanine level on that building, and they yeah, use it kind of as a balcony. Um, but when you look at the needs of Palaka, one of the needs that we have, that we have is for conferencing, for um, upscale event space, things of that nature, because we can't hold us. We don't really have a space other than the ravines that will allow us to hold a small conference, that will allow us to hold um, a large scale event. And when you look at City Hall, we've got windows that face the riverfront that are stuck all over. We've got a uh, second floor space that we that we're really unable to use. Um, and we've got right now, if you look at Betsy's office, we've got, you know, we've got water intrusion into that space. We're looking at weatherproofing and putting resources into that office. And it almost doesn't make sense to go in and spend thirty, forty thousand um, dollars to capture <coughs> 200 square feet in space um, just to have another office or use it as storage as a secondary use when you know we could take those resources and use them in a better way in, inside this building. Um, and so the conversation comes up because City Hall can meet some of our basic needs for staff and administration today, but as this community grows, as this community begins to blossom, what are we gonna do when there's five additional staff people that work at City Hall? You know, what are we gonna do when there, there's an additional need that comes up at the PD or or public works when the mold has gotten so bad that it creates some issues health-wise for our employees. And so we've got to start to think like over long-term what we're going to look at doing. We 
can we cannot look at it and continue on the way we are, but it, you'll be made to do it at some point. Uh, but we've got to plan out, look at where we are, and this is probably one of the better times for us to look at that. Uh, we've got debt service coming off at roughly $390,000 per year in 2019. Uh, but we can do it in such a way that we're smart about how we expand, how we grow, so that we don't break the budget. And we, we in essence, start using some of the old debt service money. But a lot of the money that we're using for um, facility upkeep and management and repairs, we can start to use that money towards, you know, towards other things. Um, the biggest issues that we have when we talk about um, really the police department, I think, um, more so than anything, is just that building is old, it's antiquated, it's um, from, an in, it's from an internet or fiber situation, it's always down. Um, during storm management, we lost connection, you know, and that's critical when we're sitting out in the middle of a hurricane and trying to make sure we got certain things in place because it, it becomes um, one of our EOs, one of our EO centers. And it's the same thing. The police, the fire department's in a bit of a different situation because JR building's in a, in a little bit better shape than hurt to have construction guys there. Um, but it has better, that building has a little better bones and we've talked a little bit about it. But he has needs as well. We, at some point, we're gonna have to have a conversation about Cape Larkin. Um, there were, we escaped major costs with roofing at Cape Larkin because we were able to find a fix that was roughly about $5,000 and we thought we were going to be looking at a $60,000 fix. Um, it's a metal building, but it's a metal building that's starting to have some rust issues. It was having some flooding issues. And, you know, sometimes if you build it as cheap as you want to build it, then you're going to pay the, you're going to pay the cost for it on the, on the back end. Um, but the commission needs to be aware, and we just really, this is a, a tool that it makes us all aware of where we are and how we move forward. You know, when we look at, um, we look at City Hall, but we still have an analog phone system. And you can't even change the message. And people aren't getting service from the right people. And it's going to take about, it'll take us $75,000 in funds just to even get our equipment up to the point where somebody can properly service it. And so it, it almost makes no sense to pay an IT company, you know, to pay an IT company, you know, eight, $9,000 a month to come in. Um, to manage a system that's not worth its weight. And so those are all the things we have to think about. And I know the numbers are large, um, and, we, and the numbers are on the high side, but it's time that we start to explore. It doesn't mean that we commit, but we have to explore options that are going to be viable in the future. And that allows us to be able to start to put pennies away to move forward to start to do some things that are there. Uh, we had an opportunity to talk to uh, the premier group um, extensively about the PRC building. Uh, and the PRC building is, is one for me. It, it's an interesting, it's an interesting building. It's 42,000 square feet. It has 12 acres of land. Um, they bought the building right a few years back. They carried some costs with that building over time. But to build a building of that type, you're looking at well over $6 million. Um, it has the backup generation in it. Um, it has the IT, it has the parking lot already, it has everything that kind of puts you in a position to move forward. The downside is it's on the far west end of the, of the city. The upside is that as we expand, if we get to a point where we decide to expand the urban service boundaries of the city, uh, then it becomes you know, more centralized. The other upside is it's right next to the water plant, it's right next to the airport, it's right next, it's not far from the K Larkin Airport. It puts all our city services off within a central area. Um, the, the owner of that building actually talked about the possibilities of exchanging um, or purchasing the existing properties that we will be abandoning, for lack of any other term, um, and having open meetings about what the highest and best use would be. Um, for example, using it as a, facility, a gala facility or a rental facility as opposed to what City Hall is currently being used at. And they would negotiate a pricing on that and take that off of the purchase price if that's something that we were looking at. Um, we've got an option.
option, Jonathan, I think, when we discuss it, there may be an option to use uh, one of the existing warehouses on the Rise Solution site to retrofit to do some other things. But again, when you're talking about a metal building, sometimes it makes more sense just to build a new one than it does to go in and, and to go in and repair an old one. Um, and so uh, the cost of just a simple metal building, and if, you know, you can buy them cheap and you can have something that's going to put you in a position where you can use it for a number of years. Uh, you know, you can get a, a 100 by 100 kit for a metal building for $70,000. You still have to put a slab in. You still got to put your electrical in. You got to put your plumbing and other things in place. And then you got to pay somebody to put that building up. And so um, the county just did the same thing at the fairgrounds. They used uh, they put a metal building up at, at, in the expo center. And I think those calls were somewhere around four hundred thousand or so, a little over four hundred thousand. So there are options that are out there. We we basically estimated about seven fifty. Um, for the public work to build in, the numbers that Joe came in with um, were about 1.2 million. We understand that his numbers are going to be a little bit higher, but they're going to be cautious numbers. Um, and so we, we've got to look at options. These are pictures of some of the things that Premier has done. Um, they indicated to us um, that And that's new construction, mm -hmm. and so they're they're showing that building at you know less than a hundred dollars square foot. You want to mention the per square foot values they were talking to us about on that building? Yeah, they can. Well. Yeah, they indicated to us that the per square foot values on that building um, from a run anywhere on average about fifty to seventy five bucks for them to do renovations. Um, based on what they've got in place, um, which is you know one third to one half of what the numbers are that were estimated by CRB. Um, I think we have to take into consideration they're an Ohio company. I don't know if they do some building in Florida. They're actually doing some stuff in South Florida. Um, but you know if those numbers are accurate, then we're talking you're cutting a couple million dollars off the cost of um, retrofitting this building. It's a retrofit, yeah. and it, it's very similar to the building, um, very similar to the PRC building, just an exterior look. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they said their their costs were about 60, 60 well, bucks on that building. Um, we, you know, it's conversational. It hasn't been um, something they put in writing. We haven't got authority to get there, um, but we wanted to explore options, and we wanted to hear from the commission. Um, as to the options and, and really um, where we were. I, I just think that overall, we're not trying to build a Taj Mahal, we're not trying to do any other stuff, but we gotta get to a point where um, we've gotta do something with public works. That's our most pressing need. We can survive with City Hall, um, police department. At some point, the conversation's gonna come up. Um, that building's there, we can buy it at the right price. Um, and retrofit as we go if we choose to, but you're not going to find a 42,000 square foot building that's been recently renovated that has a new roof, um, that has that has a complete backup generator and battery system that has the IT already in place and pretty much meets most of your basic needs just in the layouts that are there where you have to put in carpet and some other things and we wanted to bring that as an option. But, you know, I'm, I want to hear what the commission thinks. I'm pretty much all for um, exploring, seeing what our best option. I like to hear um, from Matt and the manager as it relates to what do you guys think would be our best option. Just make a recommendation. But um, again, the PRC building is an um, excellent um, choice as it relates to that. But there's a little bit of concern as it relates to their 
going to be able to do it all over overnight. This problem been existing for some time, and um, I know we won't be able to solve the problem overnight. So I, I'm all for the the PRC exploring that PRC option. And if anybody else has any option that they would like to put out there, I'd like to hear. Commissioner Campbell.
putting in new windows that are going to be, you know, low and efficient to, to work with the space uh, to, to, for, from an energy management standpoint, and then providing. Is it, uh, have you been in here and seen the bathroom facilities? Yeah, I was just curious. I mean, so, I mean, so we're spending double the money to re retrofit a building or build a brand new one. Yeah, yeah, probably so. Yeah, but and, and the retrofitting costs on a building like this are high. I mean, that's just that's just the nature. To, but you, but you, but I'll, I'll go ahead and put it this way because it's a, a, another big way to think about it. It's really tough to compare apples to apples when you talk about building a new building as opposed to renovating a building like this. What I can tell you is that if you were to build a new building like this with the fenestrations and the materials that make up the building, you're going to be way higher than three hundred dollars a square foot. The you know the, the what what makes up this building on the exterior with its penetration and its uh, detail and its you know it's a very expensive building. Well, we're talking about two hundred dollars a square foot. We're talking about you know something. It's it's not. I mean it looks nice. Don't get me wrong, but it's gonna you know CMU was stuck on the outside or maybe some a Luca bond or some you know brick or something. But I mean it's not going to have that the detail and the craftsmanship that a building like this already has. <coughs> So, um, I think um, we, we just got to get in chief, you can kind of, uh, I guess, kind of give us your thoughts as we go around the room and come up to um, Vice Mayor in a second and then get back to the Mission Board for and, questions. And, and one, just one small other point that I'd like to make too. <coughs> I personally don't know about this building, so again, I've taken a lot of uh, caution putting a number together for what this building would entail. <clears throat> you and I know that this building has been here in a long time. It's been through two hurricanes this past year. Yeah, we'll give an example of something yeah. that just happened with the hole in the floor. Uh, and, uh, there was a hole in the floor in the front and uh, they, they poured some concrete in it thinking that they would basically seal it up and it kept rough. Well, what it kept it's going. off grade. Yeah. It's off grade? Yeah, the building's off grade. So you didn't need to fill another crawl space? But there, there, there probably would be something in the way of a, a structural re reinforcing of this wall, uh, of this building too, along with those costs for renovation. So it's, uh, it, it's uh, literally, um, they don't know. It is, it's something new that you, you find you know, every time. When you look at the electrical panels and other things, and you can't do what heck what's in this building. Um, in here? Yeah. The, the difficulty with this building is just the fact that in most places you got, um, you're, you're putting in a ductless system. You got, you've got, uh, you got many splits all over this, this place. When you look at the annex building, you've got, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the air system there is really worse. It, it, it may be 80 degrees inside and 60 degrees outside, but it, every, all three places have the same temperature, and the temperature doesn't feel the same in all the areas. So you can go in one room and it's freezing, you go in another and it's 80 degrees, and, and you can't control. You control everything from one place, but it doesn't really it doesn't change every place. And then in the back half of that room, we're basically using it for storage. You're, you've got somewhere around 4,000 square feet of space that's just there for storage. It's not sufficient for the way we should be storing our, um, we should be storing our records, you know. Um, so it's, there, there are a lot of things that have to be changed in order for us to really uh, come up to compliance in a lot of ways. And, and I think that we've been chugging along, steady up and resources in, and the thing we don't want to do is continually put money, and I think Commissioner makes a great point, we don't want to continually put money in to buildings that will give us no, no net return on what we're getting. Um, but Vice Mayor, we'll, we'll go, since Chief kind of got quiet on that, I'll go, to, I'll go <laughs> well, over to you. You know, sometimes I do this. Um, my first thing is, I see the things that need to be done. Uh, the buildings, whichever ones, are you, we're going to do the ones that need it the most first. And my biggest question always is, how are we going to pay for it? Um, and I'm sure some of that's been figured out already. But I always like to know, so that we don't get so carried away we don't have a city anymore. Um, my only 
show me how we can do it. I'm all for it. Um, I'll have to explain to you all. In 2004, I went to fix a roof on a house of mine. And when I got in there, they said, you need an A-line roof instead of this flat one. And I said, OK. And they went to another room, and they said, well, you, you, you're going to need that. And I'm going to I'm saying, well, I want my own house. And they tell me. There's no need. Each room they went into, they told me they had to take And it pained me greatly to see it go. But I knew that that was something we had to do. To see some of these buildings leave us would probably pain me a lot. But if it's for the betterment of the city, then we got to do what's the right thing for it and do it in the right way. Um, you all forget that these two buildings were old post offices and they didn't have to worry about heating and cooling a whole lot of places in there because there were mail rooms and things and these buildings are very old. Uh, have you any idea which one of these buildings we need to look at first or are we just wanting to have permission to explore? I, I think that the conversation is about exploring, not about committing. Because everything is, is, is speculative based on what we've got in place, I think. Um, I think CRG gives us at least a starting point. I, I want to say one other thing. I might see the moment it didn't. If, if we're going to um, go, go somewhere else, I want to see these properties sold and put back on the tax roll. And that's that's all the conversation. Think, yeah, I think that we have had too much stuff taken up by tax roll, and if somebody would come in here and want to do that to this building, it would be very good for us. We need a convention center very badly because with the hotels and stuff we get, we could have small conventions here, bring tourism in here. So you know, it's a, it's a venue that's out there. We could have weddings here and have people come in here just for them. And we need to explore what's the possibilities, how much will it bring us to in doing it. But if we decide that we want to go somewhere else, I think that we need to, to put these properties, their bag of properties, and get a fair price, and then put that money into wherever we relocate. So one, one other thing I'll tell you, um, in having the conversations, um, and I think I was probably the major initiator of the whole um, PRC conversation, um, one of, one of the biggest concerns I had, one was being roughly four and a half miles away from where we are, where we are now. Um, but the other, the other, the other concern I had was vacating existing buildings in downtown Philadelphia, and in expressing that to the developer, to, to the owners of the building, um, one of the things they talked about was their interest in purchasing existing buildings, if there was a way to do that and to work it into a deal that the commission got to that point. And having open meetings with citizens to talk about what would be preferred uses of the buildings and having and having conversation that goes that way. Because one of the things I don't want to do is take a building, take buildings off of the tax roll and we still be stuck with buildings. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that that's not where we need to be. The, uh, my other concern is, and, I, and I'll tell you, Matt probably had me ask, ask that question a hundred times. Where do we, how do we get the funds? How do we create to get to a point where we can get the funds and not break the budget? And the conversations came up. Um, we looked at roughly six funds that we could pull from. Um, and also having the debt service that was in place um, to be able to um, get to a point where we can actually fund this project. We were expecting the numbers to be significantly lower than they are. Um, and if the numbers aren't lower, then I don't think it's true. Um, you know, if we can't get, you know, total cost of these projects below three million, then I just don't think it's doable. And I don't think it's time, it, it's time to do it in that manner. Um, you know, I, I just think that where we are, we need to we can pull it, we've got $390,000 coming off of 19. You can fund, you can push the, you can push the payments on the project out until the point that that, that service is off. So we don't miss a beat. We're not taking any new money out the budget. We don't miss a beat. The number we came up with was roughly about $142,000 um, for payments. And that was putting in an interest rate around 5%, um, just as a ballpark number.
which is less than half of what that debt service was. Uh, but with the numbers that, that that Joe gave us, it causes concern. And but it causes it's an opportunity to explore and to gather more detail as to what true cost would be on a project like that. The builder, the owner also has the ability to do um, the specified upgrades and give you an in purchase price with him doing those upgrades with the offset for whatever your buildings are so that you are locked into a specific number with what you've asked for. You may um, want to add to Definitely, I, I don't think there's time to delay if we're going to make it. 
decision on public works. The question becomes, as we're making that decision on public works, at one point, between $750,000 and $1.2 million, does it make sense for us to go ahead and make a decision for the future where it will be, where we can have a home for the next 34 years? I think it's great we started having a conversation because we're well past the point of, of actually um, needing to have the conversation. The facilities are, are bad for everyone. Um, but when you look at addressing the question that Commissioner Borum had in reference to the amount of money we spend out a year, I can say for the police department, it's the six to 10,000 on just fixing things that break throughout the year and um, leakage and mildew and, and things of that nature. That's not the major repairs that we have to do when things such as the roof for the annex building come up. Uh, the pricing for the roof for the main office that came up not too long ago was over $100,000. Um, and that's just to get it fixed to where it would, we wouldn't have the problem no more, but when we looked at what we had to be able to repair it, it was just a patch for a couple of years and we're right back even worse than we were before. Um, to, to look at what we're going to be putting into these bills, we're spending money annually um, just to patch up something that's going to fall apart in the future, so we're wasting money. Um, we need to be able to find something that uh, will be able to house all the agents of the employees uh, so we can better service the citizens. Uh, whether it be on the outskirts or whether it be inside, it's, it's time that we actually start looking and addressing the situation. Mr. Mayor, one other thing I just throw out there, and that is, you know, <clears throat> even if you're going to use all the 12,000 square feet of that building, ultimately, you could phase in your relocation to coincide with either one need, i.e. if public works is your most um, ur uh, urgent need in, at the outside or outset, then go that route first. Or you could phase it in in accord with your prospects for moving some of the existing structures that you have, i.e. if you think you've got a chance of moving like the I, what do you call your CID building or whatever you call it there? On the green? Annex, the yeah. You gotta, yeah, I'm just saying that you could uh, perhaps CID. with some imagination you might be able to to uh, phase in your building so that you didn't have to incur all the renovation costs at one time. I don't know. It's just if you did want to try to track, track, track that nut all at once, you might be able to do something imaginative. And I understand there's some economy in doing the renovation all at once. I get that. On the other hand, from what I'm hearing right now, everything's about at its max in terms of renovation costs and what contractors are charging and so forth. So if you were to buy some time, who knows? You might, might see a significant savings over time. Uh, um, I mean, I, I think it, that makes sense. Uh, um, just thinking out loud, um, you know, the, the one question that people come up with is, does the city lose its presence in downtown Palacca? And, and that's a critical question. And for me, it, it's the one that I struggle with most. Um, you know, the other question is, you know, we, we'll, we still have the gas authority here, but there's a distinction between the gas authority, even though it's a city entity and city hall. Um, We've got the River Center here, but I guess the question is, as we explore, the only thing that would kind of make me, you know, comfortable is the fact if we find ourselves in a situation where we're going to draw more traffic with a better use of City Hall, if we're going to draw more traffic with a better use of the annex building or that location, then and it has some benefit to the merchants in this area. You know, when we look at um, what we've got from the city standpoint, um, from the administrative side, you've got roughly 12 people who are in this building. Um, you've got and commissioners who are in and out of the building. Most of your most of your traffic has now been diverted to 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 the gas authority. Uh, Johnson's got 45 people in his you know in his property. Um, Chief's got 41, and so the majority of people don't eat in downtown. The majority of people don't shop in that town. We're starting to see some new life. If we can free it up for better use, then I'm comfortable. 
with having to explore that option. But if we can't and we find ourselves with just an empty city hall building, then it makes no sense for us to even think about going somewhere and doing something different. Um, you know, what we don't need is two additional empty buildings in city hall or four for the, just for the purposes of us having newer facilities. If we're gonna do it, there needs to be some guarantee for lack of any other term that, you know, that someone's gonna use these buildings, put them, have them back on the tax rolls and create more opportunity for destination. As it relates to public works, the other thing is, I want us out in the neighborhood. Um, you know, we've been in the neighborhood, the landfill's been there, the dog pound's been there, all this stuff has been there. And, you know, we, we got trucks in and out of the neighborhood and it should have been gone a long time ago. Um, I want us to get to a point where we can actually operate public works and not be in the middle of a neighborhood. We got more people building um, multifamily residential properties, you know, apartment complexes are building um, for the west. And so we're seeing that housing come up, your Holly Ridge, um, your Woodland, your K Lark, and all those apartments are further west. It's a greater concentration of, of new of, of residents, apartment style residents, but from the home side, it's different. And so those are the things that we're, that's what we have. So um, that's the long spiel. There are a lot of things to think about, a lot of variables, but you know, we, we're full of supposition on a lot, on a lot of it. Do we have a, a time frame that we're, um, I mean, we have this conversation, but what's the plan of moving forward? Um, do we have a time frame in which we are trying to, because I, I, I think like we had several conversations with regards to the conditions of um, the facilities and what's the, what's, what's the rollout? Like, what is the plan? First thing is we got to determine which option we feel is most viable. And so, um, I guess in essence, we pulled the commission to figure out which option do we consider to be the most viable, vi viable out of one, two, and three. Once we determine that, then we get marching orders as to how we proceed um, and explore whichever option we decide. And so, do we renovate the existing buildings? Do we, you know, do we, do we look at the ride solution location? Um, do we look at PRC or do we choose some other option and phase in how we approach that? And so that, we just need to get the market orders from the commission. So what, what's the thought of the commission on which option we look at? I would be a big one right, right away. I would be a big one like right now based on what we kind of have, I think. Looking at a little, a little bit more and talking about <coughs> looking at the advantages and disadvantages, and we're going to do a little bit more brainstorming around that because if we had tonight, this is okay, we'll rule it. Let's explore this. When we start going down that path, it might not be the right thing. I think it's going to take some additional conversation around that as it relates to uh, our decision. Is there, is there one that's out? Is there, is there an option that absolutely we don't need to explore? Well, I. Why? Well, can we go back? I mean, for, okay, so adding a building to the existing public works lot and then renovating all of the other buildings. I think it's fair to also consider these options, options one, two, and three. You can almost subset them into groups. You have the option one is use existing city land, existing city buildings, manipulating them however possible or however you desire that you want to do it, but ultimately getting you to the final uh, the final thing is everything that you have in the city, you're using your existing resources. Option two, you're taking and buying PRC away, and you're consolidating those resources, and then you're looking for something to do with the existing city buildings. So th those are pretty much, I think, the two ways to kind of think about these two things, whether or not you're going to, you know, I don't want to say go all in, but, you know, consolidate everything to the PRC building or utilize your existing uh, city lands and your existing city buildings for all your functions. Which is not efficient, which is not cost effective, yeah. and logistically it's not mm -hmm. good. Yeah, and, it, and, it's, and it's important to know where you are. So, uh, the yeah. other question is how, how suitable are our existing structures for repurposing? Mm -hmm. and 
for instance, this building, if you try to repurpose this building for private use, commercial sector, whatever, realistically, is it is it something that is easily converted so that it can be repurposed into whatever, office space or whatever? Uh, and I don't know structurally or anything else, I don't know anything about that, but is that something that's easily looked into by construction types like yourself, yeah. Jonathan, somebody? Uh, yeah, to look into that is, yes, very easy. Uh, you know, basically it just requires a little bit of research. The hard part is determining what the function is going to be. For instance, this building, the square feet we've got, do you have enough parking so that anybody could buy this building and use it? Well, and, and that really harkens to, you have limited parking for this building, let's say, but some of the things that you're talking about, you know, for instance, if we were going to talk about wedding facility or a, like a wedding hall or some, you know, kind of functions that, you know, would, would be larger conference type things, uh, you know, depending on how you utilize the space, I would say that for the most part, any of those larger events are going to happen on the weekends or at night. Is when the majority of the people will be coming around, and if that's the case, then you get to borrow space, I would say, across the street from the Putnam County School District building. You know, their, their operations you might are... be able to practically do that, but I'm not sure your building <laughs> code or the city's code will allow you to do that unless there's some modification. It would, unless there is some agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's kind of a hard thing to, to discuss because ultimately you do hold the cards. The city can't determine to waive certain feature or you know certain things about parking restrictions or stuff because you're not going to be able to. That'll read good in the paper too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't. You, you, you can't. You can't build a facility and make this. Let's say it's a. You know, even if we said let's make it a um, a city hall or a city theater. I don't know. Nothing that you're old ordinarily do. But I'm just going to put it on there. If you made this a city theater or a place where that people could come watch city, you know, local shows and, and do whatever you're going uh, to do for that point. The parking requirements that are dictated in the building code for something like that as an assembly space or what you would need and the amount of handicap parking that you would need for a space like that, you're not going to get from the existing surrounding areas that you have, you know, and whether or not that you can say that, oh, we're going to use public works as a satellite parking lot to fulfill those requirements and then we'll just bus people. You know, there's, that's something that you guys are going to have to determine how you want it to read. But you are restricted. You know, what you have is what you have. There is no, you know, there's no expansion of parking for to bring people here. But those are practical considerations. If the commission decides that as a prerequisite to moving forward with some other site, they're going to have to have some relative confidence that they're going to be able to move this building or move it, meaning yeah. market and sell it, or sell the building next door, those are practical considerations. Very much so, absolutely. I, also, I think what's not captured, um, even if we were to look at option number three, there's still going to be some additional costs because the public works, they, they're going to have to build additional shop, warehouse, uh, wash rack. Um, so three. none of that is really captured in that. Three. And three? <laughs> now it was it was my understanding that we were going to be doing, you know, when we were trying to come up with numbers that there would be parking here. But then again, I don't know the existing public works facility how vacated it would be. It could still have some of those functions as well. Store about it, the wash. Uh, Wash Rack needs to be our operation center. Warehouse needs to be our operation center. We can have what we call a laydown yard, satellite laydown yards, where we can keep line rods, millings, uh, construction debris that get moved off from time to time. Um, our operations would morph if we were a little bit 
we're, we're getting ready. I'm trying to wrap it up. So, are, is the commission okay with us exploring? Is everyone on board with not looking at option one? Can, I wanna, I wanna know. Can we see the PRT building? I know it's big, and I've been in there, and so people yeah. on telephones and just, just to see. Cause I'm a person. You tell me, thousand feet, twelve hundred feet. You got apple. I wanna see the space. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. But once I get there, I can put all that stuff in my head visually, and I can tell you. Is it where we we come in a meeting next week? We can, I mean, we can set up. We can set up can a site visit. Okay, so. can we do a, a site visit and, and put it on the agenda for our next meeting? Because I'm on a, yeah. some stuff don't come here until two o'clock in the morning, and that's, I need my two o'clock in the morning. So, so, the, so the purpose of direction in this meeting. Um, can we take some additional steps to explore options two and three? Is everybody okay with that? And and yes, just to, just taking additional steps to look at options two and three. Um, That's ride solutions as well as the RC building. Right. Yeah. Want to look at the ride solution option for both works as well? Yeah, we like to, I, I think we should not throw it out. Right now. Yeah. I think the only thing we need to throw out is our existing public works building. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, so, and so. I think uh, so. Let's, for the purposes, if it's okay with the commission and everyone else, let's let's look at options two and three, um, gather some additional information, give some specificity, um, and see what real costs would be. Is that is that okay? Any aches, any objections, any other suggestions, any any other direction? How long do you think it's going to take to get that? I just don't want them to be lost in the shuffle like the SP. Um, let's try to get it back here in less than 30 days. I think. If we can do that, I mean, that's fine. That should be um, I'm just going to Let's shoot for March 8th. <laughs> let's shoot for March 8th, get some additional information. At least keep it on the ticker. Specifically, what are we going to be asking CRG for? Are we were looking for a per square foot cost breakdown for per each space. And then <coughs> I think we need to be more detailed uh, with Joe as to what our specific needs are mm -hmm. um, for each one of those spaces. Um, and then we also need to lock in, see if there's, see if there's a, a locked in per square foot space <coughs> and number that we can come back with for both buildings. I think that um, I think that gives um, I think that gives us a bigger perspective as to where we are. The needs of administrative needs, police needs, and public works needs. I know we've had time to kind of compensate on it, but I think it would be better if uh, possibly uh, Jonathan and Joe could come to each of those facilities um, and see uh, for itself exactly what we're going to need moving forward, whether it be existing or whether it be a new site. That way we can get actual cost or a better idea of actual cost. Okay. And then we'll coordinate a ride so we'll give a ride solution. Uh, maybe uh, maybe a bit of a bias trip. And have ride solution show us their site and the PRC site. And so and the and our visit public work site so that people can see. The two options are option <coughs> two where we still renovate these spaces and we move public works to ride solutions and or option three which is locate everything to PRC. Right. I, I don't Option one was renovated existing spaces, and it doesn't seem like that's very popular. That's why I'm asking. I want to yeah. make sure we yeah. still have an option where we're renovating these historic buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I just think we need to give a little more direction. We've eliminated one, and so we've got two, and we'll see if there's a mix of phase or whatever it is at that point. Huh? Go ahead. Is there not a way that we can?
mean, I think those numbers are going to be sufficiently similar, I would think. So. We will also, once we get numbers, we can show where funding could come from, some possible funding options as well. And I think that will be beneficial. Is that complex in the city limits? It is. It is. But I think, and so those are the things we have to look at overall. So we've got that. Any other comments, concerns? We'll set up a tour. We'll get the numbers. And we'll be back by the March 8th meeting. We will move into our, nothing else is on the agenda. That's the direction of the staff. We'll stand adjourned on this meeting. We'll go immediately into our Brownfield Assessment Grant Workshop, which started an hour ago. Thank you.